I call the Pasadena City Council meeting Tuesday, May 15th to order. Pastor Brad McKenzie will lead us in prayer. Councilman Bass leads us in the pledges. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we're thankful tonight for the privilege we have in a place like this to celebrate freedom and be able to see government at work. And we thank you for the opportunities we have to serve in our local communities. We pray for the city of Pasadena, for our police department especially, as we are in police week this week. And we pray for all of those who help uh, serve both here in this chamber and outside of this chamber and other departments. And we thank you again uh, for the great privilege we have to be a part of this great community, but also for the freedoms that we celebrate in you, and especially for the love that you give us through your son, Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Will everybody please face the United States flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Texas flag? Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas. One state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you all very much for coming out tonight. We have that beautiful summer weather. It's trying to get us acclimated. So it's July and May. Anyway, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. And with that, I pass. Good evening, everyone. A uh, couple of uh, folks I'd like to recognize this evening and a couple of events. Uh, number one, uh, Habitat for Humanity. We uh, had the opportunity to gather with Thrivent uh, Financial and three homes were dedicated. Uh, two were dedicated to families. And the third one uh, actually had a 20, more, 20 year mortgage burning. So there's some families that are truly blessed and we've got uh, some companies that are really partnering with Habitat for Humanity and giving these homes uh, some fresh new families and fresh starts. Also too, uh, this past week, uh, we had the opportunity to recognize some of our police officers that had studied and taken the sergeant's test and also to the lieutenant's test. I'd like to say congratulations to our, our new sergeants, uh, James Coker and Calvin Harris. And then also to, um, would like to say congratulations to Sergeant Chris Murray as he uh, scored the highest for the lieutenant's test. And all three of these gentlemen are serving in their new capacities as we speak. So congratulations to them. Uh, Pasadena is going to be a finer city because of them. And then also, too, we want to, we'd like to recognize uh, it is National Police Week. Today is National Police Day, a memorial for all of our fallen officers. And we're going to have a memorial service here at the Pasadena Police Station on Thursday, beginning at 730. So I would recommend folks come up uh, 6.30 to 7 o'clock. The service starts at 7.30 to, to pay honor to our fallen officers, not only here in the city of Pasadena, but throughout our great nation. And with that, I pass. Councilman Villarreal. Uh, well, thank you for being here. And I think he said it all, but I'll look at the path. Well, thank you, Mr. Villarreal. May the 28th. This is going to be our last council meeting for this month before Memorial Day. And I want to give recognition to our veterans who have fallen. This is what Memorial Day is. It's to honor the veterans who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Now, November 11th is Veterans Day. So it's always November 11th. But Memorial Day moves back and forth. It's, it's the fourth, fourth mo uh, Monday in the, you know, that month. But uh, <coughs> Flanders Phil is where this Captain uh, Lieutenant wrote a poem about the World War I veterans. And uh, also uh, the lady that uh, was working in uh, New York City at the YFCA, she picked up on the poppy thing. Poppies are grown, and they generally blow with the wind the seeds from one place to the other. 
But at Flanders Field in World War I, they were a lot of them. And uh, those poppies are very, the American Legion has co-sponsored with them, I guess, since 1917. And that money they raise from the poppy sale goes for the veterans, but, and, and uh, physically or mentally handicapped. It's, it's there for a purpose. <clears throat> so buy your poppies, and, and remember the veterans who give the ultimate sacrifice. This is what Memorial Day is all about. If they haven't fought those wars in time, that's what goes ahead, it's time. But the veterans who gave the ultimate sacrifice, we need to honor them with respect. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Casados? Well, thank you all for coming out. Looks like we've got a smaller crowd than usual, but that's okay. Um, also, I'd like to give a belated uh, Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I know, I hope you guys had a great uh, weekend with your families and children. Um, I know I enjoyed it, you know, spending time with my mother and, and uh, my wife and the kids. They, they had a great time, so, uh, you know, uh, I hope you guys had a great time. Um, also, uh, thank you to the police officers for all your service. We appreciate that. And uh, with that being said, I'd also like to kind of clear the air. I know last uh, last meeting uh, I brought up some uh, information about the private detail that the mayor had, and he uh, uh, come across and said that I didn't that he didn't have a private detail. And so what I did was I got on the I went to the city website and uh, found a picture, and this is just a picture of the mayor sitting with his private detail at lunch and so this is actually a, a picture this is I, I wasn't uh, spreading rumors or whatever you want to talk about but uh, this is actually something that did happen and uh, this is really something that to me is uh, directly affects the safety of the public and I feel that uh, these individuals that cost the city well over about five hundred thousand dollars with their uh, payroll and benefits they should be put back into the rotation to alleviate the officers that are having to work a lot of overtime. You know, we as a, as a city need to be very uh, cognizant of the families that these police officers are leaving at home. And when they're having to work a lot of overtime, I apologize. When, we're, when they're having to work a lot of overtime, that takes time away from their family, from their children. And I just think that these other uh, officers need to be put back on the, on the streets, put back in the rotation. And uh, with that, I pass. Well, I don't know if this microphone is working or not, but I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. And uh, in regards to what Councilman Casada said, we have police officers that are in City Hall. They are for the security of City Hall. With that, I pass. Councilman Bruce. Yeah. Thank you, Bruce. Um, Few things. I uh, came across a uh, went to a uh, emergency management meeting this past week and came across a, uh, a good app. Um, for those of us who live here in East Harris County, um, there are about 135 uh, patrolling facilities or facilities that um, use chemicals. Um, there's a, an app called Care Online, and that's C A E R Online. C A E R Online. And what they do is is they will update you on any type of um, chemicals or maintenance or work or leaks or explosions, anything, even if, even if it's something really small. Even if we're saying, hey, we're going to um, change over um, from this chemical to this chemical or we're working on this. And, and um, the plants, the chemical plants, they're, they're pretty stringent on the reporting. And so you may have a, a 100,000 gallon tank. If just one gallon of that chemical leaks out, maybe it's still in the concrete or something, they have to report it. And those reports come up on this app, Care Online. So if you see something going on in the chemical plant, a flare going off, whatever the case is, you can check this app. It'll give you updates if it's a, it's a dangerous chemical or not or any actions you need to take. And that's C-A-E-R, Online, Care Online. It's in both for, for Droid and Apple phones. Also had the uh, pleasure of attending a police memorial um, and where we honor some of the families of the fallen uh, police officers. And, um, not enough can be said about uh, everything they do day in and day out. Um, and People all forget it is a dangerous job. Um, one more thing, um, Harris County Commissioner's Court um, last month passed um, a bond to go to voters um, not to exceed $2.5 billion. Um, and this is for flood mitigation. 
about one billion of that is for um, a match federal grant. So the, the federal government said we're going to give you one about approximately one billion dollars, but you have to match a billion of it. Okay. So uh, Harris County didn't have a billion dollars laying around, so they said, okay, we're going to pass the bond package so we can match that money to get the federal money. However. With federal money comes federal guidelines, and one of the big points that the federal government requires is that there has to be a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning for every one dollar they spend in flood mitigation, it has to protect one dollar of property. So say they have a $10 million project, they want to uh, widen a ditch or a drainage area or a bayou, they spend $10 million doing it, well they have to mitigate, that has to mitigate $10 million worth of property. That's pretty easy to do in, say, River Oaks not all over Harris County. Now, so they did it, the, the county commissioners, they added an additional 1.5 billion to mitigate some of the flood damage in those areas of Harris County that wouldn't meet that one-to-one -one ratio. Um, I've uh, contacted our engineering department to make sure that before we send, before it goes to the voters, that the city passes anything that everything it can do to make sure that we're getting some of that money. Because we're, as, as residents of Harris County, we're going to be paying that tax, and we're going to pay off that bond, so we make sure that we get projects here in Pasadena with that offense. Councilman Kenton. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and being part of city government tonight. Big reminder, Strawberry Festival starts this weekend. We're going to kick it off at the convention center at 5 o'clock, cutting of the uh, shortcake. So it's, it's a big fundraiser for the uh, Strawberry Festival, and it's, it's going to help a lot of school kids get an education. So come out and support them. And 7 o'clock, I'm going to be doing my favorite judging, Cook's Choice. With that, I pass. <laughs> uh, citizens wishing to address council, Robert Jr. Uh, <clears throat> Good evening, council. On. Good evening, Council. First, I want to commend Council on removing the middleman from the collections contract as well as voting to rebudget the back door and ethical car allowance. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Uh, as well as voting to rebudget the back door and ethical car allowance and increase back into general fund. Both actions by Council were great steps in favor of transparency and accountability. Second, I was unfortunately not present last meeting, but saw the footage of a council member questioning the expenditures of th this administration's security detail. The administration denied the uses of officers in that manner, which is all well and good, except this administration openly admitted to hiding things in the budget on January 16th during pre-council. Any administration which admits to knowingly being deceptive about its budgeting can't reasonably be taken with any semblance of credibility when denying budget issues until a new administration takes office. The grapevine has informed me numerous times that these outrageously high security details expenses have at times been used my name to justify the cost. I'm for reducing government costs on the back of taxpayers, so I don't appreciate that. Thank you to the councilman that brought this issue forward. I really appreciate the outstanding job our council is doing in evaluating and holding the administration accountable, for which is their proper function. Furthermore, I want to thank Councilman Shane Vine for his diligence in following through on numerous citizen issues. It is refreshing to finally have a councilman that sees to the needs of our district and is both proactive in his approach and accountable to the people. Lastly, on May 10th, the comedian Chinadu released an internet sketch about Pasadena, ranging from the potholes on Southmore to the ghost town of Pasadena Town Square right outside the front door of this building, to the Stinkadena reputation still lingering about our city. While the sketch was quite humorous, the fact that comedians are able to self-promote and make profit off of our image problems still sheds light on what more we can do is to improve the image of our fine city. Thank you, Council. Laura Mitchell. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'll be short and sweet. There are some flyers rolling around, and I am from the Vern Cox Multipurpose Recreation Center. Um, my name is Lauren. I'm a recreation specialist there, and I wanted to invite um, all of council and anyone here in our community to come out and support our <coughs> annual um, wheelchair wind-up softball tournament. Um, so the Vern Cox Center is a recreation center for individuals with physical and intellectual disabilities. 
Um, and every year we hold an annual tournament where we have both people with disabilities and what we call an able-bodied person get out there in wheelchairs, play about 20 to 25 games over the course of the weekend. Um, and so what I've done there is I've put together a packet of information about our center. Number one, a program calendar of the things that we do at the Vernon Fox Center, number two. And then there are some wheelchair wind-up flyers. Um, there's one for you and some for y'all to hand out to those around you in your neighborhood. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Rex Lindbergh. Good evening, everyone. It's my honor on, uh, on behalf of Mayor Wagner and City of Pasadena to read this proclamation. Whereas William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army in 1845, once said, the Salvation Army is a place of hope. For over 150 years, this organization continues to honor their mission, which states, the Salvation Army, an international movement, is, a, is an evangelical part of the uni universal Christian church. Its message is based on the Bible. Its ministry is motivated by the love of God. Its mission is to preach <coughs> the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. And whereas the Pasadena Corps Community Center started in 1951 has been a resource of Christian ministry. They provide services to all, to residents of all ages, social services, financial assistance, food pantry, daily meals, youth character building, and recreational activities for seniors are just a few of the Salvation Army's ongoing programs and services. And whereas in 1954, the first National Salvation Army Week was declared by the U.S. Congress and proclaimed by President Dwight D. Eisenhower as a reminder to Americans to give freely of themselves to service others. The Salvation Army has served survivors from every major national disaster since the great storm of 1900. And whereas the Pasadena Corps community led by its lieutenants Luis and Marianne Villanueva far exceeded all expectations during the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey in 2017. They cared for our community, providing whatever they could to do the most good, such as thousands of meals, emotional and spiritual support, clothing and hygiene needs, cleanup supplies, and emergency shelter. Our Pasadena Corps not only fed citizens in need, but also first responders and city employees working during the hurricane. And therefore, Jeff Wagner, Mayor of the City of Pasadena, Texas, urges all citizens to honor the Salvation Army during this week for its faithful ministry to our city and the entire world. He proclaims May 14th through the 20th, 2018, as National Salvation Army Week. So to accept that, we're going to have uh, Barbara Sitzman and Rick Guerrero. Barbara Sitzman is our manager of Volunteer Pasadena and is a current board member of the Salvation Army. And Rick Guerrero is our manager of economic development and current chairman of the advisory board for the Pasadena facility of the Salvation Army. And this lady is? Ida Ewing. Ida Ewing. Mm -hmm. And Ida, tell us about you. Come tell us about you. I have been a member of the Salvation Army since 1982 here in Pasadena. Uh, I have worked for the Salvation Army uh, the last several times during that, but since 2007, currently as a Boys and Girls Club, so work with children. I'm also a member of, of the church. I, I did not know you were going to be here, so I'm going to present this to you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for everything. Oh, sure. Did you guys come up here and get a picture? Yeah. Maybe just right up here in front. Yeah. Cool. Good call, Councilman. Thank you. <laughs> you get a proclamation, right? Yes, sir. And it's a good looking group. You know what? All right, very good. Thank you for coming forward. Just found the progress payment. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, 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 we do the presentation now. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I missed presentation minutes. Thank you. Motion. Thank you. Motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Uh, do we need to go back to progress payments? Okay. Personnel changes? Financial I'm sorry. We, uh, for information, we didn't have a vote on that, or, or I missed it on, on, uh, on the progress payments. The progress payments. I don't believe we had a vote on We it. had it prior to, but you know, I, I did them out of order. So we did okay. vote. Yeah. Well, let's vote on it. Let's prove it. <clears throat> Need to vote on it. Okay, so. So we had a motion and we had a second. Had a second. Don and Terry, yeah. and then he asked, and then we voted. That's it all in favor? Yeah. yeah. I didn't hear you. Excuse me. Thank you. The finance resolution? Motion. Motion, Councilman Consalves. Second. Second. Councilman Tate, any discussion? Mayor? Yes. I would like to abstain from anything in order to the best mind. Thank you. Any other discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Right. Personnel changes? Okay. Motion. Second. Motion, Councilman Posada, second, Councilman Bass. Any, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, mayor's report, uh, final readings, Madam Secretary. Uh, mayoral I'm sorry. Um, mayoral appointments, uh, Community Development Advisory Board, um, appointment of Alexa Gutierrez. Motion. Second. That's two strikes against you, Mayor. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Who seconded it? Who seconded it? I did. Same. Councilman Salas. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Motion passes. <coughs> Final readings. Yes, sir. Ordinance 2018-54, contract with CNC Water Services LLC for the Sycamore Well Rehabilitation Project South EW 056 for a total appropriation $129,948 from the system CIP fund balance account. Ordinance 2018-55, contract with Morcon Services LLC for the Pansy Street Paving and Drainage Improvements Project Phase 1 South E SO45 for a total appropriation to $2,276,165.85 from the 2017 Certificate of Obligation Fund Balance Accounts. And Ordinance 2018-56, contract with Construction Masters of Houston Inc. For renovation and repairs to Campbell Hall, resulting from hurricane Harvey damages at eighty-six thousand seven hundred sixty-three dollars. So moved. Second. Motion. Councilman ba Councilman Bass. Second. Councilman Shanghai. Any discussion? Mayor. Yes. I'll make it. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say, uh, give a, a, a thanks to uh, our public works department for uh, all the work they've been doing in the city. I know we've been doing a lot of work in District D on Preston Road, uh, Thomas Avenue. So uh, I just wanted to tell the public works department, thank you for uh, all their hard work that I passed. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. First readings? Ordinance 2018-58. Contract with Corn Main for the purchase of 3,200 Neptune water meters, $586,939. Motion. Second. Motion, Councilman Casal, the second. Councilman Caton, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Ordinance 2018-59, contract with Ashbridge Inc. for emergency debris removal services for a period of five years. Motion. Second. Motion, Councilman Shane Byron. Second, Councilman Bass. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Resolution 2018-50. Accepting grants of $1,000 from American Library Association, $2,500 from Texas Book Festival, and 100 children's books from Brownstone Book Fund. Motion. Second. Motion, Councilman Consalves. Second, Councilman Wheeler. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Resolution 2018-51, agreement with AT&T Corporation for first nets of driver access for first responders. Motion. Second. Motion, Councilman Shane Byron. Second, Councilman Harrison. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
motion passes. And with that, I uh, want to thank everybody. That concludes uh, tonight's council meeting. Thank you.